Hello and welcome to my video series. Today we're going to be talking about the the has scales. That's right, the has scales. So this is a very uh, very old language. It was uh, it's uh, but it's very good. So we're going to learn about it and uh, all the things you can do with it. So has scale was invented in the uh, 1920 by the uh, Mr. Haskell Brooks. He was the the uh, great man. He invented uh, the a lot of things. He invented the uh, modern computing machine. He uh, he created the prototype, which was called the M14 uh, 16-bit uh, 22 processor. It was uh, not too fast, but he, uh, he created it. It was able to process uh, five bytes a minute, and it was able to create the diametric modeling schemes for when he was uh, targeting submachine gun tranquility measures back in World War uh, Two. So it was very useful then, and it's still useful now, and he created the Hascales from what he had learned on working the, uh, the diametric modeling machines, and now he's created this uh, generalized, all-purpose, purely functional modeling application framework, which is what Hascales is. So now the Hascales, we're going to learn how to do it. Alright, so um, here we go. As you, as you can see, we're going to open up the Integrate Development Environment. Alright, so uh, there we go. We're going to uh, open that up. And then we're going to do... Uh, the codes. So here we go. Alright. So we've got it ready. And now, first of all, uh, in order to write the has scales, we have to know exactly how to do it. Alright, so first all we have to do is we have to remember that all functions are defined uh, implicitly, which what that means is that they are defined in terms of the other functions, which are defined in terms of the functions, which creates a recursive looping pattern. And this is very interesting because it creates a, a diametric modeling scheme, much like what uh, uh, the, the Mr. Haskells was working on. And uh, this diametric modeling scheme can then be used to create the, the functional diametric models, which those are very dis these are very interesting because of their uh, uses in uh, platonic modeling frameworks. So here we go. First, we're going to type it up. We're going to first need to create the the comments. So that's a uh, two dashes, and that's how we make the comments. And then uh, you see, then we put in the comments. So we have to say comments. And we put in the comments, so we say uh, the, uh, the the comments. And now we do that, and uh, we create it. So there we go. Now that we've created the comments, now the compiler will know what mode to put itself in. It'll put itself in full mode. But just to be sure, we're going to create a, a language pragma. And this is very important because it allows us to do the things we to do to full mode. See, now this enables the language features. And now we're going to uh, move right along. So now we're going to create our first function. So first we'll create it. We'll call it hello. And now in the Haskells you have to define the function. And you have to give, you have to tell the compiler what its type is. Now all functions have a type, so we will say its type, and it is a type of. Uh, we say it's type eight, or no, yes, type eight, and then we say that it's to the type uh, type zero. So type eight to type zero, and that is how that will work. And now we can define the functions. Now that we've said the typings, now we can do the definings, and that's all there is to uh, to that. And uh, here, uh, um, here, here we here we go. All right. So now we all we need to do we say hello, and we say hello equals, and then this does the definition the definitions, and now the next thing we must do is we have to say what it does. All right. So we say that it will uh, implicitly define a function in terms of the diametric parts. And then this tells the compiler exactly what to do. What's amazing about this is you can basically write plain English and it will just know exactly what to do because it will take one function after another and do recursive multiplicative composition. And then this will create a framework that is 
just so um, remarkable, remarkably, remarkably flexible, remarkably intangible, and just remarkable in all states, in all cases, at, at, at once, at once. So um, we're going to define another function, we're going to use hello, we're going to call this one test, it's going to be type 99, and it's going to be to type uh, 12. And uh, I know the typings might be a little uh, um, even confusing, but all you have to do is look it up in the the, uh, the Hasgales the Hasgales handbooks, and uh, those will be at uh, the, the comments, and you will know where those are. So uh, you can look those up and know what types you need to have. And now we do this. So now we say that the uh, the test equals uh, hello times twelve and a half. And this will then take hello and it will times it by twelves and a half. And that's very good because then we can do the times and that's how we do the basic maths. So then if we were to do uh, a I.O. statement, now these are very different, we have to define an I.O. So to do that, um, we need to do, we're going to say main and it. Uh, now here's a little a segue that I must share with you. Uh, you see, when we do the, the I.O.s, when we have to do the things that do outside, you know, do outside the program, when do outside happen, we, not, we must create the buffer overflow conjugate creator in order to keep the, the systemic pure functionality of the has scales intact. So what this means is we must create the monad. And the, the monad is this very interesting thing. It's, uh, not many people understand it. That's okay. Um, I don't. Uh, I don't believe Mr. Haskell did. Uh, no one really understands what the monad is, but that's okay. We're going to use it, and it will work, and it will allow us to do IOs, and then using IOs, we'll then print something to the screen. All right, so we're going to print to the screen. So we'll have to do the IOs, however, so we can't do the traditional typing. We have to say I, O, and we must mark them with a diametric marker, which is one of these, and that will let it know it's I.O. We must then create a function of the transverse variable augmenter, which we must then import. So it'll go ahead and import the transverse augmented variable transponder. And now that we've done that, we will then have the functions. That function that we imported is called the uh, transpond. And then we will have to do a multiplicative inversion. And then after that, we can create a typing case. This is it doesn't matter too much which ones. And then after that, um, we are ready. It now knows how to do the IOs. Now we just have to do the. Now we can do the traditional typing, which will be from type 989 to an unknown 00. zero. And that, you see, it's actually very intuitive. You see, as it travels through the brain frame, we can see the exact transgression of the code itself. So it's actually very remarkable. It's very good. So that will tell us exactly what happens next. And now we can do the print. So main is actually just the uh, print statement. So we do print IO. And then, after that, we do print IO on the tests. Print IOs on the tests means we want to print IO the tests. And it'll say, all right, we print IO the tests. It says, all right, we'll print IO the tests, and it print IOs the tests. So that's exactly what we wanted. So that'll work. All right, that's good. And now this uh, should work. So there we go. Uh, this should be a uh, correct one. So now we've created a few functions. We imported some things. We put the language in full mode, added the commands. So now we can run it. So let's go ahead. We're going to save it. And we're going to save it all files, tech tricks. This is going to be ep 11hasscale and then we save it, and now we must uh, redirect to it, but first we must now open up the, uh, the commands, um, there we go, so we open up the commands, and the uh, first step now is to go to um, we must now redirect to the, uh, as you can see, we must redirect to to the, com the to the folder. So we're going to go CD. Um, I'm not actually sure. We're going to have to check it out. So, all right. So, so we will redirect 
to where the the uh, the, the Hascales files is, which is right here. So we'll just take that and um, paste. Oh, whoops, that's not right. A CD and then the pastes. Oh wait. Um, all right. So let's see. Let's just um, let's go back. This is very good. Uh, this is good thing to know when you're uh, transversing the directories. It's very good to know how to do the CDs. So we do the CD, and now we're going to go into uh, my docu one, and then we do the ter, and uh, we go into CD uh, tricks, and then we do the dare, and there it is. EP11. Alright, so uh, there we go. That's everything we needed. So now all we have to do is we can run it. So now we have to use the uh, Haskell compiler function. So I'm going to have to look it up because I need to see what name it is. As soon as, um, let's see. Alright, here we go. Alright, so it should be somewhere in here. Where oh where? I think I saw it. Oh yes, this one. EMM386 is the Haskell's compiler. This stands for Emetric Metric Modeler 386, which was the original name for Haskells before it was renamed to Haskells. So, alright, so we're going to run this. So then we, we uh, get the command EMM386 and we run that on ep11.haskells.txt. And as you can see, it created the warning statements, and if we run it again... I don't think I can, I don't have access to those functionalities. Oh my, um... I don't know how to escape this. This is not good. Um... Alright, there we go. The crisis is averted. Okay. As you can see, it did work. It created the warning statement, and it allowed us to know, and it printed the testings, and that was the in -depth parameter that we saw. That was the testings, that was the test, and as you can see, it compiled. So that's a very good, it's very useful, and it's uh, extremely uh, powerful and remarkable in so many ways. Alright, so we're going to do uh, one more example. Alright, so we're going to add in another function. Called rest. It is type eight to type uh, to type intrinsic 232 optional. But this one is going to be the double argument, so it'll take another and it'll say that it'll return a 90 903 imperative. All right. So the next step now is we create the rest. We have to make a uh, placement for the argument, which we call p, and then we say that p is a factor of a twice conjugated reciprocating number. And you see, we must put the period at the end of longer functions, otherwise it will forget where to stop and it will go too far. So this is to help character fall off on longer function definitions. That's why it's very important. In fact, we can put a couple more on there if we want to, and that's okay. And there we go. And now we can go ahead and we can create the... We can now inject this function into our main. And then we can do this. And then we'll just go ahead and inject it. We inject the rest. 340. Of time, 230 at 400 degrees Fahrenheit period and there you go 
and as you can see it will now create everything and uh, this will work however if you noticed if you have been listening there is a piece missing from the code and I will leave it as an exercise to you to find out what that is and then if you can figure it out then this this program will then compile but only when you fix the one problem that I've left out and that is like I said that's what I want you to do as an exercise because I realize that if I want to engage the users more I need to I need to give you uh, the brain teasers the, uh, the the taxings the waxings the the in out you know we got to do that so that's what we're going to do now I'm going to I gave you the exercise so that's that's your challenge you have to figure out what's wrong and then you can uh, then the code will compile and you'll be on the tra fast track to learning all about the functions now as you can see it is very very different code structure from normal languages because it is a functional language and not an imperative language so that's a very extremely important difference but now that we've uh, learned it now that we know exactly what we're doing we can now begin to create all kinds of amazing programs and i'm glad you are here to uh, enjoy the experience and um, so yes that's uh, that's what we have and i hope to see you more uh, you must do the likes the comments and the subscribes and the code snippets because we need to we need to see what you got and um, and then also if you have, tell me in the comments what you think the problem is and uh, you'll see if we can uh, figure this one out so uh, that's it and uh, I hope you all have a good uh, good night. And then next time, next time we're going to be talking about another language. We're going to be talking about Lisp. That's right, the Lisp. It's a very high-level, structured, object-oriented, twice double back language. It's going. We're going to get into what all that means next time. It's going to be a very exciting episode. I hope you all enjoy it. And I hope you enjoy this one. And so again, I hope you enjoy. And I'll see you in the next video. So, uh, so good night and, um, uh, goodbye.